so oh, perfect. I'm more in. Okay, thanks everyone for joining us today for our first Explore Local webinar. I'd like to give a huge thanks to Erin from Strive for bringing this idea to us and helping helping us get off the ground with it and really making all of it happen. Um, so thanks for joining us and support local. And I'll turn it over to Erin. Is it turned over to me? It is now. All right, here we go. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie. Um, so I guess for anyone who doesn't know me, uh, I'm Dr. Aaron Binstock. I'm a chiropractor and co-owner at Strive Health and Performance. Uh, we're just located at Austin and Nelson, just across from the new Safeway. So a little plug here, we do, obviously we have chiropractors, physiotherapists, registered massage therapists, kinesiologists that do active rehab. Uh, we also specialize in concussion management and our physios do IMS. Um, <clears throat> I guess just a quick little, how did this come about? Obviously, uh, everything has been nothing but coronavirus these days. So um, we've all been affected, especially if some, uh, you know, our small businesses have been, you know, struggling. Uh, so I just tried to come up with a way that, you know, if we can help out other, you know, small businesses in the community, um, just get them to reach out to other people. And at the same time, we can provide some entertainment for the rest of us in the community stuck at home doing nothing. And I think most of us are pretty bored of doing the same thing every day. So, um, you know, each week we have a couple of webinars lined up, already six of them. Um, we're just going to have different topics. We'll talk about the other ones later, but uh, tonight's going to be something fun. We've got live, uh, a live cooking show, essentially. We're going to do some fish tacos. Um, so thanks everyone for basically supporting local. Uh, it means a lot. And thanks the chamber for partnering up with me and making this happen, doing a lot of legwork for me. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> so our first episode, like I said, we're gonna have Marnie from Inlet Seafoods. Um, they're in Newport Village. Um, so we will do the live fish tacos and then we'll do some Q and A, uh, both I'll just ask some questions. If you guys have any questions along the way, um, you can type them in the chat and then we'll get to them after we can get you to ask them or I can ask it if you're too shy. Um, <clears throat> so kind of before we get to it, um, Marnie, um, she's going to introduce herself. I'm pretty excited because, I mean, I've made a fish tacos a few times. My wife says they're excellent, but uh, I have taste buds and I know that she's lying. So uh, I'm excited to learn a few tricks here. Um, Marnie, without further ado, thank you for being the first person to come on board here and do this. So take it away. Just tell us a little about yourself and uh, let's get uh, let's get the fun going. Okay, thanks, Erin. Thanks, Stephanie, for having me as well. So like they mentioned, we're going to do some fish tacos today. Um, we can show you kind of an image of the final product that we're going to try to get to. So that's kind of what we're looking for today. We're going to do some nice halibut fish tacos. It's going to be more kind of like Asian fusion style. Um, so a little bit about myself and Inlet Seafoods really quickly. Uh, my dad's owned Inlet Seafoods since November of 2002. Um, I've kind of worked there on and off since I was a kid, but I went full time most recently in January. Uh, so it's been a fun ride working for my dad. We're uh, learning things as we go about one another, but uh, yeah, I won't keep you guys any longer. So let's get started. We're going to also drink a nice can of liquid encouragement as we go here. I'm a little bit camera shy, so bear with me. But uh, first things first is we're going to preheat the pan and also put put in our tortilla chips into the oven so Marnie, by the time we're done. Marnie, can I just interrupt you for one second? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I saw that big blue can you had there. Um, so is it a fact, like, would you say that this experience will be enhanced if you have a beer within arm's reach or? I would definitely say that. Okay, perfect. Yes, yeah, highly recommend that you have a nice can of beer to keep you hydrated while you're making your fish tacos. Thank you, just had to check. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay. So we're gonna put the tortillas in the oven. I like to use these corn tortillas. I actually get them from the little butcher that's kind of right across the street from Inlet Seafoods in Newport Village. They're Abuelo's corn tortillas. I just think they look cool because they're also blue corn. So all about the presentation as well. So we'll stick those in the oven and set a timer just so we don't burn them. Cool. And then that pan is preheating so 
I cook with garlic butter with everything. We make that at Inlet Seafoods. Um, I'm a huge fan of garlic butter. I believe that the more garlic, the better. I'm one of those. So we'll just get a nice dollop of that going in the pan. And we're going to wait for that to brown a little bit. Uh, while that's browning, we can kind of show you some of the ingredients that we're going to use today. Um, so we've got our nice boneless, skinless halibut. That's important just because one, you're not having to pick bones out of it after it's been cooked. And two, it's skinless. So everything that you're paying for with the halibut, you get to eat. Um, we've also got some salsa, some cheddar, green onion, radish for color, and some avocado that I've pre-cut. We've got some poke sauce. You can also get that from Inlet Seafoods. That's kind of like a sweet soy sesame ginger, ginger sauce and then just a spicy mayo. So you can make that at home. I just typically use sriracha and mayonnaise. Um, and then my two trusty seasonings. I put this stuff on everything. And this was a, no a nice one also from Humble and Frank. I also add that. So I like to season heavily my fish. You have no obligation to do so, but that's what we're gonna do today. So just get our butter going a little bit. Have another sip of beer as you wait, because that's important. Okay. So we're almost ready to go here. Um, one trick to halibut that you're really going to want to remember is hot and fast. So halibut is notorious for getting dried out, especially if you put it in the oven. Pan frying is definitely ideal for cooking your halibut. And we're gonna do hot and fast. So pieces like that, they're gonna take all of two minutes per side, maybe not even. So get those going in the pan. And then I just kind of get them going and then that's when I add my seasoning and then I flip. So we'll season those. Like I said, I'm not particularly shy with the seasoning, but you have no obligation to put this amount on your fish. And then we're just gonna flip those and get that side going. And then we'll re-season this side as well. So yeah, like I said, keeping an eye on the time, you're only gonna need about two minutes a side. One of the reasons why I really wanted to use the halibut in the fish tacos, like I already mentioned, they're boneless, skinless. Um, so everything that you pay for is what you're eating. No bones. You're not having to deal with that hassle after the fish has been cooked. Um, our halibut is wild from Haida Gwaii. Uh, it's hook and line caught. And we also like to bring in a larger size of fish. So typically the whole halibut that we bring in are approximately 30 pounds each. Um, the advantage of that, like I mentioned earlier, halibut is kind of notorious for drying out easily. So if you start with larger fillets, that's going to help retain some of its moisture. So yeah, let's get that going. Um, while that is frying, you can kind of take a peek at your taco shells. Those are almost done in there. So yeah, we'll just keep an eye on that. Got some more beer if you'd like. Okay. Flipping those now. Less is definitely more of the halibut. And you have to remember too, after you've kind of cooked them, so as long as they're sitting in the pan, they're still sweating a little bit of heat, so they're still continuing to cook after that time. Pull out the tortillas from the oven. Kind of. Those are looking good. Okay, let's let those cool down for about a minute there and then we'll kind of get ready to add our fixings. So Marnie. Yes. While you're letting that cool, I have a question. Um, yeah, I right away. So you, you, the two minutes each side. Um, now, are, I saw you that you kind of flipped it quickly. So are you, do you sear it like right away? And then I you're doing the like, two minutes? Yeah, yeah, thank you for asking. I, I do like to do that myself. I kind of flip it a couple of times um, just to make sure that the seasoning is even. You don't have to do it this way, but yeah, two minutes aside, but sometimes I get caught just flipping it multiple times just to really soak up all that garlic butter and seasoning. Okay. But 
yeah, I'd say the trick to halibut again is just hot and fast. It kind of whatever you think it needs, you're going to need less. Okay. And when you say hot, are we talking like high or medium high? Uh, I have mine on medium high. Medium high is good. Yeah. Okay. You also don't want to burn the garlic butter, assuming that you're using garlic butter, but yeah, it's getting nice and golden there. So usually at this point, when it's, I can kind of see in the middle of the halibut there, I don't know if you can kind of see that, but it's starting, it's just a little bit rare in the middle. Mm -hmm. When you see that, that's normally when I turn off my heat. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to sit there for a second while you're finishing up your tacos. So I bring these over. And again, if you have no, you don't have to do it this way, but if we're trying to accomplish that kind of taco, I'll kind of go in the progression that I did a little bit earlier when I was making it. So put a nice dollop of salsa in the middle there. Is dollop a technical term that. or? <laughs> it's a Marnie term, you're welcome okay. to use it. <laughs> no, I've just never heard it's that It's kind of like pimps, I feel like that's very subjective. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Now take the halibut off the heat because I know that's done. And then what else did I do here? So I did some cheddar after that. I like to make relatively loaded tacos myself. So generally it's kind of a matter of tetrising all the ingredients so it doesn't fall over on you. Um, but yeah, there's no need to actually make them this loaded if you're making them at home. And then Got the avocado already pre-sliced. If I was doing more of kind of like a traditional, like authentic Mexican taco, then I would definitely make my own guacamole as opposed to just using slices of avocado. But I find for presentation for what we're doing, this is one more convenient and two works out nicely. <clears throat> so I normally put those on there. And then this is when we're gonna add the halibut. And we'll last one there. Cool. And what would you say the the size of that fish is like per per taco? Like how much is it like ounces? Um, yeah, we could definitely <laughs> thanks, <Gulls>. <laughs> <laughs> Um Yeah, it's a. Uh, probably about three ounces per taco those are loaded as well like that's a that's a good size taco so yeah um what else do we got here and then i'm gonna usually top with a little bit of green onion oh, that's a lot of green onion <laughs> but yeah use whatever kind of quantity you like and then this is where i add some of the sauces i find with the radish and the black sesame that i have if you add the sauces before you kind of add the sesame it helps kind of stick to the taco as opposed to it just falling right off when you do go to eat it um so that's the poke sauce we're adding there helps having them in these little squeeze bottles but not everyone has that i get that so it might look a little bit different on your end at home and then that's our spicy mayo And then last few ingredients. The radish is more so just for presentation, but uh, I also do like radish. I know that's not everyone's favorite, but add that there for a little bit of color. And like I said, the sauce should help some of the sesame seeds stick, but clearly my plan did not work. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's pretty well your tacos, guys. That's awesome. Yeah. What is your, do you typically have a side dish you would have with fish tacos or? Um, well, I eat so many tacos that I typically don't have room for a side dish, but it, uh, what I have done in the past when I did kind of more authentic Mexican style is we make a ceviche at work as well. So I'll do like ceviche and tortilla chips as I'm having my beer, I'll have a bite of the ceviche and make up the tacos. But uh, yeah, typically I eat three or four of these. So not a lot of room left, but yeah, that's pretty well it. Um, I'd say the only thing that I'm missing is my lime margarita, courtesy of Taps and Tacos. Um, this is jalapeno here, but you can get these pre-made mixes at Taps and Tacos 
as well. And I'm a big fan of having a margarita with my fish tacos. I find it's refreshing and makes the cooking taste better if you have a couple. Yeah, that's a win-win right there for sure. Totally. Um, can you uh, can you just show the spices that you used? Yes. Please. Yes. So this one here, it's a magic salmon seasoning. Um, Any time that I cook, and my friends if they are watching, they're going to laugh because they know that I swear by this stuff. Uh, I will not cook without it. I actually had my bachelorette party in Bellingham and my wife was disappointed to learn that I took the canister of seasoning with me because I was going to make potatoes with it and then I refused to me across the board. So you put that on everything, not just salmon. One obviously. is the humble and Sorry, what's that really one? Really everything. Eggs, sandwiches, I do not cook without it. <laughs> and, and then that second this one? This one again? Um, this is the humble and thing. Yeah, that's that one. So we don't actually sell this in store, um, but it's one of my favorite additive seasonings. I like to add multiple seasonings when I cook. I find this one kind of gives it a little bit more color and flavor. Well, this one is just, again, my staple. That's my base. I always start with that foundation. Nice. So I yeah. that I um, definitely... Then... Uh, sorry, I was just going to say that you cook, you cook your fish way less time than I do. So... Um, the great news about the way you do it is you can eat quicker. Um, <clears throat> I've definitely, I've also chopped my fish up prior to, that's clearly a mistake, right? Uh, no, not necessarily. That's another good way to do it. Um, I find if I'm doing more kind of like a burrito style, then I'll use either halibut or cod or another mild white fish. And it's also good if you mash it up in the pan like that as well. So this is definitely one way to do it, but not the only way. Okay. But in general, would you recommend cooking it um, in the pan as a whole and then chopping it after or chopping it before and then cooking it? Yeah, like let's say if I wanted to chop up these pieces, I would probably toss them in the pan as I did in kind of those thicker pieces. And as it's cooking, that's when you could start mashing it up with a fork or whatever works. But yeah, it separates pretty easily. So yeah, that's definitely a good way to do it as well. This is just the way that I've always done it, but there are many ways to make the fish tacos. Um, that looks so good. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Stephanie, can you unmute Damien? He's got a question for Marnie. Damien, are you Hi, there? Great. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Damien. Hey, Damien. Uh, uh, great presentation. I was just wondering if you recommended any other types of fish for tacos. Definitely, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, I mentioned earlier, you could definitely do cod as well. Any mild white fish would kind of be acceptable. Um, we also have some nice frozen mahi-mahi steaks and I find those are really ideal as well. They stay together nicely. I don't know if anyone kind of took notice, but the halibut does flake apart a little bit. The flavor's fantastic, but the mahi-mahi holds together nicely. Um, you could also do our Argentina prawns if you kind of wanted to do more of a prawn taco and those can actually be eaten raw if that's what you're into, but typically I like to cut them if I'm putting them in a nice fish taco. Um, Josie asked, do you guys deliver at all? Uh, we do not deliver. Um, kind of depending on the situation and how the world's going right now, we might have. Oh. Um, if you're comfortable coming in the store. So we're just trying to limit the amount of customers. We're uh, Right now, we haven't adjusted any of our hours. Um, so we're Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. And then Sundays, we're 11 to 6. So just slightly shorter hours on Sundays. Okay. So, I mean, I got to ask that halibut looks ridiculously delicious even before you cooked it when it was raw. Like, why, like, how do you, like, where do you get, you said you get it from Haida Gwaii? Yeah, so Haida Gwaii, um, previously known as the Queen Charlotte's, uh, it's all, all hook and line, cod or line, how they, that's what they call it. But uh, yeah, it's great halibut. And like I was saying earlier, we're boneless, skinless fillets. Um, we also trim the halibut with precision. So we're getting off on a dark line and that will typically kind of contribute to any undesirable fishy flavor. Um, so that's off our halibut fillets. So that also helps kind of just have that nice halibut flavor that you're looking for. Um, I think I mentioned earlier as well, we do bring in larger whole fish and that will help the halibut retain some of its moisture when you start with a larger, thicker fillet. Hmm. And how do you like, can you explain how it's actually caught? 
Um, my dad would definitely be better at explaining it in detail than I am. Uh, it's hook and line. It's not drag. So unfortunately with drag, you do get a lot of bycatch. There is some bycatch in the hook and line, um, but it's minimal. And a lot of it actually goes back to market because typically you're catching cod, rockfish, snapper, those kind of fish. So a lot of it is still utilized in stores. Okay, cool. Um, Steph, can you unmute uh, Michaela, please? She's got kind of a three-parter question. I don't see Michaela on the list. Is she possibly on? Oh, never mind. Sorry. There you go. Thank you. Hello. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, what kind of tortillas were they again and what size is it? Uh, the tortilla are buelos, blue corn tortilla. Okay, perfect. Yeah, is that a good visual there? Can you see them okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You just get those from the little butcher um, in Newport Village there. Sweet, thank you. Why, like, why black corn or blue corn tortilla? Um, if I'm being totally honest, they look cool. Okay. <laughs> I know there's there's other great tortillas out there, but yeah, I just think that the contrast typically, because I am using a white fish, having that contrast of blue or a darker color, as opposed to using something that's just kind of like wheat or lighter in color, just looks better with fish. But I wouldn't say there's any other reason other than presentation. Okay. Um, now I just want to get to your, uh, you guys do a lot of homemade stuff and you, you're, you guys are doing a generous giveaway here of $20, which we're going to do a draw for shortly. Um, so can you just give me a little example as some of the homemade stuff you guys sell? Totally. Yeah. I'd say probably our most popular homemade item would be the salmon or halibut Wellingtons. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what a Wellington is, it's a pastry that's got a hunk of fish in the middle, so either salmon or halibut, and then we make a lemon pepper and dill kind of cream cheese sauce that goes in the middle and then it's wrapped in a pastry. And then you just cook those from frozen. Um, it's a super easy meal, highly recommend. Uh, we also make a smoked salmon pate and a crab dip. Those are kind of great if you're entertaining or looking just to bring something to a party as well. Those are always a crowd favorite. Uh, we make crab cakes, prawn cakes, salmon patties, cod patties, a ceviche that I mentioned earlier. We also make that. Uh, we have some homemade sauces. Uh, we also have the garlic butter, which I kind of showed <laughs> earlier. But yeah, yeah, the, the possibilities are kind of endless. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I have to ask because I was searching your website and I saw something called a halibut pie. What is that? um that's probably an outdated item oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we have a we have a tuna pot pie now which is also awesome we don't make it ourselves. uh danielle's kitchen in new west makes them but that's also a great item if you're looking for just a nice easy dinner that you cook from frozen in the oven wow all right that's, that was awesome um so for those of you um who are following along this is you know this is going to get put up as a recording so you can always refer back to it of course, if you have any questions, you can, you know, email uh, me at drbinstock at strivehealthandperformance.ca. Um, I'm just going to, we're about to do the, the draw here. Um, but just before we do the draw, uh, I just wanted to touch on something quick. Um, so if you guys can see the screen there. Um, now, if, if this is not having to do with tortilla or uh, Tacos, unless you injure yourself, uh, maybe not burns, that's not what we can handle at Strive. But uh, in general, if you guys have any questions about any injuries or you just want some advice, feel free to call our hotline, 778-355-3050. Uh, you can speak to any of us, therapists or Josie, our wonderful person on the other uh, side of the phone. Um, for any information and registration about future webinars, um, you can go to the link that you see there. It's basically our website and go to the webinars page. We will be updating it as we get more, um, more speakers. Um, and of course, we will always be providing updates on our Instagram page, strive underscore, underscore health. So <clears throat> what we have coming up is on Friday, we've got Club Sweat. So they're gonna be doing a free at-home workout with us. Again, doing some question and answers. Next Tuesday, um, we've got Patina Brewing. They're gonna do some beer and wine pairings for us and just general talking about what makes an IPA a double IPA, milkshake IPA. 
um, all that fun stuff. So of course, beers will be encouraged then while watching as well. Um, then we have Patrick Lago. He's a golf professional. Um, he's going to basically help us out to improve our golf game, which I know I need that. Um, so lots of tips and questions you can ask him. The following week, May 5th, we've got Innovative Fitness. They'll be doing another personal training session with us. Uh, and then May 8th, we're going to tone it down to a little bit more of a serious topic, but definitely necessary. We're going to have a clinical counselor from Strawberries and Sunshine. Um, they, uh, she's going to basically talk about how we can improve our and optimize our mental health during this time. So uh, super important topic as well and more stuff to come. So let's do the draw. And they have to be still on here if they're going to win. So um, all the names are in this bowl. You're just going to have to trust me. And the winner is Alexandra Pesa. I know there's a slight bias for Strive, but I'm sorry. You won. So, Alexandra, you can go to Inlet Seafoods um, as early as tomorrow. And Marnie will make sure that that gift certificate is there for you with your name on it. Um, I think I got all the questions. Lots of nice comments for you, Marnie. You should read those. Um, you. Did an awesome job. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone, for supporting uh, local here. Uh, and please, please, if you have any suggestions of any topics you want me to try to cover, um, you know, send me an email, reach out to whoever, uh, call us. Uh, and then, um, yeah, keep, keep attending these, spread the word. Um, any last thoughts for you, Steph? Just thanks everyone for coming out. Like you said, make sure you tune into the next couple. We've got six, seven, eight awesome ones lined up and they're just fun and lighthearted and a great way to end your day. So we look forward to seeing you at, at the next one. Or start your evening. Or start your evening. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. Bye. Thanks, guys.